Welcome everyone. It's so chaotic outside, but in here we get to worship an awesome God. 1 John chapter 5 verse 14 says this, Now this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. So please turn off your cell phones. Settle in and let's get ready to worship and hear an insightful message. We are so excited that you are here today. Let's see you guys. 
noise this morning? Somebody wave at me, man. I feel alone. It's good to see you guys this morning. You guys ready to praise the Lord? All right. Well, wave at somebody who's down the aisle from here. Give somebody a fist bump. Tell them you're glad to see them in God's house this morning. Amen.
good God who gives us all that we are in need of. Amen? Amen. Oh God, I thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning, to be in your presence, to sing songs of praise and worship unto you. We ask that you would have your way amongst us this morning. We've got a prayer request this morning. As usual, we're going to have people up here that would love to have that opportunity to pray for you. So regardless of what it is, if you've got a need this morning, please feel free to come up and, and be prayed for by one of our uh, prayer partners this morning. Yeah. 
and you go, hey, you're not supposed to do that. You have to run after them. Raise your hand. God runs after us. Let me rephrase that to you guys. God, the king of all kings, who sits on a throne, does not sit there and say, come up here, come to me. He goes, no, you know what? I'm going to come down here to you. I'm going to come down where you need me to be. I'm going to bend down to you. I'm going to reach my arms out to you, and I'm going to hold you. Why? Because I love you that much. How many, kids, how many people have ever told their kid, either you climb up into my lap or I don't love you? No. We get off our chair. We get off our high horse. We get off everything. We bend down to our kids, and we go, hey, I love you. When they stub their toe, we don't go, you know, wipe it off. Okay, some of us military people might tell them to rub some dirt on it and go, you know, go tell your mom. But we don't do that. We bend down and we say, I got you. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care where you are right now. I don't care. I mean, I care. I legitimately care. We all know that. But God says, whatever you've got, I've got it. He doesn't say, just come over to me. I'll, I'll get to you when I get to you. Every single prayer. And the best part is he hears when you don't see it. Did you hear me on that, church? He hears you when you don't even say it. This morning I woke up, and if you guys know this, Pastor, uh, Pastor Jeff is in Florida right now. Pastor, bring back the sunshine. Bring back the heat. Let's get rid of the snow. I want to play some softball. I want to go outside and have church at the park. I want to, I want to get out and I want to barbecue in this snow. It's just, whoo, okay. Calm down, Pastor. Calm down. There's new people here. They don't know you. They don't know you. You get a little cray cray here. Okay? God loves it after you in the winter, man. Amen! <laughs> Pastor Brian's preaching today. He's got an awesome message he's going to give to you. And he said, he sent me a text last night. He goes, hey, bro, can you do the offering and do the welcoming? I'm like, whatever you need, dude, I got you. Because <laughs> we all know I love being up on stage. <laughs> I'm the biggest introverted extrovert. I don't know how that works, right? It's like jumbo shrimp. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's an oxymoron, right? So, so he said, will you do this? And I said, yeah, sure, no problem. Whatever you need for me, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll help you out. I'll be whatever you need me to be. And I'm like shaking all throughout service because I don't know where I'm going to go. And we had a meeting this morning. He was talking to me. He was praying over me. And I'm still shaking. I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And then I had a prayer team come pray for me. And I said, I got this. They affirmed something that I've been praying in my own mind. My wife went and got the prayer team. And my wife doesn't know my prayers that I'm praying at home because I pray them myself. And she knew exactly what I needed. She knew what to, where to go and who to go see. And these ladies came over to me. And they laid hands on me and they prayed for me. You guys understand, when somebody lays hands on you, it's powerful. There's something spiritual when you get to pray with your brothers and sisters. And I know Pastor Brian's got a message, and I know we're going to get into that. And, and I'm sorry to do this to you again, but worship team, can we go back two songs? Two weeks ago, Pastor Doug unveiled a new song. And I talked about opening our hands. You can't have a fist and receive anything. Hey, you want my phone? Come here. Come here. Come here. Let's grab my phone. Let's make a fist. Let's make a fist. You can't take his hand. But if he opens his hand, he can receive it. I'm sorry. I'm a visual person. I have to show you how that works. God says, I've got this. Open your hand and you shall receive me. Come on, church. Get up on your feet. Let's go sing this song again. Let's receive the Holy Spirit. The altar is open. If you need prayer, come on up. If you got something, you need somebody to lay hands on you, raise your hand. I don't care if you stay seated or if you stay where you are right now. I got prayer warriors all over this church. If you need prayer, raise your hand. Somebody will come lay hands on you. You don't even have to tell them what you need prayer for because they're so anointed by God, they already know. How is it that God knew what I needed here? Or these ladies knew what I needed if it wasn't from God? So if you need prayer, I want you to raise your hand. You know the song I'm talking about, right, Pastor? We're going to go back to this song, and then I'll come up, and then we'll do the welcoming. Hi, guys. Welcome to the Oh, 
Thank you.
give a round of applause to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Worship team, I won't make you sing no more, but thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Let's give it up for them. Oh, you may be seated. Yeah, I know, right? All right, now stand back up. Let's get back to worship. No, I'm just kidding. So, uh, oh, some people, some people like can sit there and read the Bible all day long. Some people can watch TV all day long. Man, I could listen to music all day long. And sometimes you get spoken to through the music. And I'm telling you, literally, like y'all's worship just takes over. So thank you guys. All right. My name is Pastor Danny. If you're new here. I am not the senior pastor, so I do not run anything. I just derail service. But you're already in Pastor Brian's sermon. So cancel your reservations at Olive Garden or uh, Tomato Brothers. We're going to be here for another four hours. Uh, I'm just kidding. So um, if you guys don't know, we're here. We just love you guys, literally. Uh, before we get into anything, I love you all. my protein shake all right so let's uh let's go into the steps um there's get to know you cards if you're new here please fill one of these out put your name i want to know who you are don't write i'm interested in men's ministry youth ministry and kids ministry and then not put your name how could you be interested in it if i don't and i can help you serve in it if you don't tell me who you are so uh we put that on there and we have prayer requests on here um, I read them every week. Uh, Miss Roberta loves when I come into the office on Tuesday, and I literally stand at her desk. And I open them up, and I just start reading them, and she's like, what are you doing? I'm reading prayer requests. I'm praying. And she goes, go to your office. Leave me alone. So she doesn't really do that. I love Miss Roberta. She just, you know, pokes me and pokes me. 
So, uh, but I do read these, and uh, Pastor Brian reads them, and Pastor Jeff reads them. We do pray for you guys. So, if you can, fill one of those out. If you have a prayer request, we'd love to pray for you. All right. I think we're at, like, week four of these, and I still don't have everybody. If you are part of our directory, if you're part of our church, if you've never been here before, and this is your first time, or if you've been here for years upon years, some of y'all were born in 1999. I literally looked, Miss Diane's birthday's coming up, and I was like, I wonder exactly what date it is, and I pulled it up. She said, it said she was born in 1999. I, I'm dead serious. It said she was born in 1999. And so some of our youth kids are older than Miss Diane, which is really, wow, okay. So there's a lot of people here that uh, I have, like, year, month, but no birthday. So if you guys can fill these out, put them out at the Welcome Center, um, the Hub. I'd love to get to know you guys, and I'd like to... Um, meet you and meet your family and everything um and then if you've been here and everything you know i like fist bumps and high fives and hugs so come by and say hi with that it's gonna be hard for her to follow me but let's give it up for our kids pastor miss erin you know you love me. oh lord it's hard to be humble huh <laughs> Good morning. Um, this is Buddy. If you've not met Buddy before, he's part of our Boys and Girls uh, Missionary Challenge. Um, and at the second Sunday of the month, they get to present Buddy and talk about what we're doing um, as an entire corporation or group. Um, and I just wanted to give an update. They, they published numbers for BGMC this year. Um, and the previous record for BGMC um, was $8.9 million. That was set in 2019. Um, this year, even with all the challenges and the crazy world we live in, um, our district office, our national office, let us know that this year kids gave $10,364,453. So, great job kids. Um, 26 districts in the national office or part of our national group, um, gave it, had a record year. And I want you guys to know that we're one of those 26 districts. So the total given to missions in our Michigan district between BGMC and Speed the Light was $1.1 million. So it's pretty incredible. And you guys as a church gave 14,181 of that. So thank you. So, and I'm going to break script a little bit here, and I, I'm not going to apologize for it, but because <laughs> I want to, but I know that this is God, and I kind of feel like a parent, and on Christmas, when about when the kids are about to open a present, and I feel like our prayer ministry almost feels like that sometimes, because we had confirmation that this is really what God wants us to do, so bear with us here for a minute, but if you are under the age of 18, um, if you are a senior in high school or less, could you guys come forward for me? Um, if you're scared to grab your parent, that's okay. But I really would love for you guys to come up here at church. Can you give them a round of applause as they come up? <laughs> and there's a couple more of you guys come up. I just want, um, I feel like the Lord's wanting me to tell you guys something as a whole group, as a whole unit. Um, that you guys are world changers. You guys are part of this $10 million, right? You guys are doing that. And there's a reason why in Matthew 18, Jesus says that you need to have a heart of a child to enter the kingdom of heaven, right? And you guys love, like, I've never seen it. And the world that you guys are raised in is totally different than the world that we were all raised in. And it's not going to be an easy road. Because you have, but you have Jesus in here, which means it's going to be a confident and blessed road. All right? And we love you guys. As a church, we absolutely love you. I have been part of your lives since most of you were teeny tiny babies. And I know that Pastor Brian will agree with this. We love our job to be part of your lives. I think my job is the best job here. Don't tell anybody else that, okay? Because I get to see you guys when you're just so little and before hormones sit in and it's amazing. And then I can pass you on. It's awesome. But what I'd like to do is have our prayer team come forward. And parents, if you guys want to come up and, and join in on this, you're more than welcome to. But I'd really love to pray for you guys as a whole. All right? And church, if you want to extend your hands out, this is our next generation. These are our future politicians. These are our future doctors. This is, could be a future president in this midst. He 
either way, they're our future church. These are the church that are going to be the people who do our funerals one day. And we want to pray for them and lift them up and tell them that they belong and they are loved by a maker that is bigger than they know. All right? So if you guys would bow your heads and close your eyes and just reach your hands forward and pray for these children. Lord, I thank you so much for our Sunrise family that includes these precious children. And Lord, we, we know that you go before them and that you've put pillars in their lives that can lead them in positive directions, Lord. That you can fulfill their destinies to the fullest extent of what you've promised them, Lord. And we are so blessed as a church to sit by and watch that happen and be part of their lives and encourage them as they go forward. Lord, we thank you for each and every single one of them. You know them by name. You know the hairs on their heads, Lord. You know everything about them and what they are about to do. And we thank you for the blessings that they bring to this church. We thank you for their faith. We thank you for their hearts. We thank you that they are willing to serve. We thank you that they are willing to be part of our congregation in many different ways, not just playing in the back room. Lord, we thank you for everything they're about to do. Thank you so much for our children. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> you guys because this morning in the prayer room we pray every Sunday at 9 30 and this morning we felt very led to pray for you guys and I didn't realize what my gift was so I was probably 40 and I told you I mean I'm pretty old but you guys are part of a body that encourages your gifts to be used and our specific prayer this morning was what th that your gifts would be activated that you would know what your gift is because each and every one of you has one. You might have more than one, and it's to be used in the body of believers. So I just wanted to encourage you guys that that is what we pray this way. So a lot's been confirmed this morning. So. Yay. Yay. Yeah. Now, I'm a big crybaby, but I'm going to tell you this right now. Uh, when I walk into this church, I don't sit in the back because, uh, usually I don't sit in the back because I get distracted, so I sit in the front, but since I've come to this church, and I could name a few of you young people, I don't even know your names, but I want you to know something, and I mean this with my whole heart, when you start worshiping, I've been watching some of our young people, unashamedly, and I don't care if you raise your hands or not, but unashamedly raising their hands. And big smiles on their face. And I see you guys coming in happy and giving yourselves to the Lord. And I want to say this. Know this. There's going to come opposition to this. But you are making breakthroughs in the spirit realm on behalf of your parents and on behalf of the older generation. And... Even Peter, the Apostle Peter, got told by Jesus, someday someone's going to come and take you and lead you in places you may not want to go. And know that you are making breakthroughs for our generation. We've been praying and believing God, but you guys are making breakthroughs, man. And if for nobody else, when I come in this place and I see you guys worshiping and unashamed of Jesus Christ, I don't buy all this. The world's in a terrible shape. Everything's going south. You know, it's terrible. When there's young people like you guys singing and worshiping God, it's going to turn this world around. Yeah. And we're proud of you yeah. and of our youth pastors because yeah. you guys are sold into the best you can. Thank you, guys. All right, and without further ado, we're going to give Buddy back his attention. Thank you guys so much. You guys can have a seat. I love each and every one of you, and I'm so thankful you came forward. Um, I asked the kids today, I asked a few of them what competition we should have, because that's, I'm not, okay, I was going to say I'm not competitive, but that's totally not true. <laughs> and I ain't about to do the football game because, woo, um, I still need Jesus. So anyway, um, <laughs> I get started and it gets a little crazy. So 
most of the kids still said they wanted to do boys versus girls. So boys on the blue side, girls on the green side. All right, so come on over. So we're going to sing happy birthday to him. circumstance for the God to bring kid, people to your church? Do y'all see how many kids we have here? See our youth kids that are willing us to come up? That's our future of our church. And it's because of our giving. All of you guys. So I'm going to go into offering. So there's three ways you can give. You can, uh, or there's four ways you can give. You can text Sunrise to 833-345-5945. You can give online at the Sunrise app. Follow the prompts. You can go online at sunriseonline.net. Or the fourth way, there's a box right by those double doors. You can put your envelope. There's an envelope in front of your chair. You can put your envelope in there. Um, and, you know, we really appreciate you guys um, for your giving. Um, I think there's a video. Yes. 
Okay, so that is my exit cue. So uh, please enjoy this video and uh, love you guys. We'll talk to you later. Hey, you guys, look at that. That's amazing. Uh huh. Whoa, look over there. Have you guys seen anything as massive as that? Great. Those cliffs are huge. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Well, we're here. Looks like everyone else just got here too. It's time to look up. There's more to life than what's on your screen. Go off-road on the adventure of a lifetime and experience the greatness of God's love. Explore colorful canyons of the Southwest from a rock-solid faith and discover that God is monumental. That was a little bit awkward, but anyhow, if you're a kid and you're going down to Kids Ministry, now is your time to hang, head off and have fun, but we want to make sure you know VBS is coming up again. It is a lot of fun. It's a blast, and if you want to volunteer, I know it might seem outside your comfort zone. Sometimes it is for me, but it is worth the time and the investment you'll make. It's incredible what God does, and and VBS and things like camp. So if you want to sign up, check out the planning menu, see the details, if you want more information, maybe you're like, I don't know what I could do, please feel free to talk to Miss Erin at some point, connect with her, and I'm sure she can find a way to connect what your passions and gifts are to what's happening in kids' ministry. And with that, a well, lot's been going on, obviously, this morning. This has been good so far. I hope you feel like God has been moving, and, and I want to want to pray, not because... You know, some people are like, oh, God, give me the words to say. I, I think even better is when God just speaks directly to you. So can we just take a second and just shift our hearts and minds a little bit to what God wants to do in our life? I mean, yeah, it's great to worship God, but I think God ultimately wants to do a transformation. And so, Lord, we just take a second to pause from excitement, from the, just the music and everything going on, and just say, Lord, we've been worshiping you, lifting you up, recognizing you're awesome this morning, Lord. We ask that you would speak directly to each of us, right where we are, with exactly what we need. That, that we don't get so caught up in the rules, we don't get so caught up in the emotions, but we just are sensitive to you, Holy Spirit, in what you want to do. Because you are the great I am, the great physician, the great one who is the comforter, who knows what we need. And so this morning, you know where each of us are at. We just open our hearts to you and ask that you would speak to us. In your name, Jesus, amen. I want to take a little bit of time this morning and want to actually talk about Pastor Jess been in a, a series that's been about roadblocks to discipleship. And, of course, Pastor Jeff is always gracious, A, to let me come up and preach instead of pulling in some other guest speakers or calling in somebody from you know, mega churches and all the, the places of connections. But he's like, hey, you know, you can speak and whatever God puts on your heart, you don't have to go through the series. And I was like, actually, I feel like I at least have one message for the series. And that's what I want to talk about today. And I, I don't know, I always feel like when I get ready to preach and I'm spending time with the Lord, just seeking him and, and praying and asking what we need to do. I'm like, okay, that's going to be a landmine that we could really be stepping into. And I'm like, okay, I'm willing to walk there anyhow. Okay, that might might get a little awkward, but we'll go there. So I will just kind of preemptively tell you that I'm just going to say what I feel like the Lord gave me. It's not meant to be offensive. It's not meant to be a jerk. It's just meant to say, I think there's two major obstacles that we tend to either gravitate to one side 
into this one or gravitate into the other one. And honestly, we will probably relate to both of them, but this church, you'll probably know I'm going to lean really heavy on this first one I'm going to talk about because I think this is the one we have the greatest tendency to err into. It's not that it's all bad, but I'm going to explain what I mean. Because I think we have sold ourselves short because what I think has happened is we tend to err on the side of doctrine and lack experience. And here's what I mean by that. I mean, it's great to study the Word of God. It truly is. I'm not anti-Bible. I'm not one of those people that thinks we don't need the Scriptures. I'm not one of those people that think that you know, education is bad. In fact, I am a super nerd. I will study just for studying sake. Somehow, I not that long ago, got studying about the development of English language. Not just about two weeks ago, I was reading about how we ended up on a seven-day week across the world. Why? I was just curious where they were going to go with that article. No other reason. I love to learn. Did it change my life? Not at all. Did it help me? Not really. Did I get bored partway through that particular article? Yeah, so then I just started speeding through it. I'm like, okay, this is just rambling. I'm like, you could have said that about 10 paragraphs. I don't know how this is 80,000 pages or whatever it was. It seemed forever long. I'm like, this person's rambling. No offense to the author if he's listening to this. But I'm just saying, I, we love to learn. And I think the dilemma is we think by gaining knowledge, it leads to transformation and change. We think if I just learn this, it would change my life. Whatever this is. If I just learned the secrets to parenting, I would be a better parent. If I just learned how to seek God in prayer the right way, I would be really a lot closer to God. If I just knew what my gifts were, if I could just have somebody could walk next to me and tell me what my gifts are, then I would find my place in the church. We just need to learn a little bit more. And the challenge is we miss all the experience, and not just talking about experience like in job experience, talking about experiences in encounters with God. Talking about experience where all of a sudden the Lord shows up, and this is going to sound almost countercultural, but in a sense intellectualism leaves the room for a second. For example, I was listening to the song, Kate actually hates this, at least this live edition of the song, because she's like, all they do is keep saying the same thing over and over again, which normally I hate. I am anti-repetitive in many ways. I, I used to, when I'd go to church, I'm like, how can you drag a song out for 30 minutes? Honestly, how can you do this? Like, I would, I've said this before, and I really am serious. I used to show up about 45 minutes late to church just so I could catch the end of worship, because they would just go on and on and on and on and on. And I'm like, how? How? Seriously, four lines. How can you sing four lines that many times? Four lines. And it's like the two of them are almost identical. And it's like in that moment, I wanted, I'm like, just give me something useful. Give me something, in, in, you know, a piece of information that's going to help me. Let me learn something I find interesting. Something. But here's something, I'm listening to that song, I just said, I hate repetitiveness. And when I say repetitiveness, I mean, at one point, they just keep singing and humming the name of Yeshua, Jesus in Hebrew, over and over and over again for minutes upon minutes. It's not 20 minutes, you're exaggerating. That's, that's Kate, if y'all don't know my wife, who obviously does not like when I have this song playing. Somehow she misses the first 10 minutes of this song and only hears the last 10 and says it's 20 minutes. But I say this because... While I'm listening to that, I'm setting something up. The Lord just dropped a simple question on me. Just a simple question. That went something to the effect of, what about those in heaven who just keep singing things like, holy, holy, holy? What about in Revelation, where we see them just praising God? In fact, let me pull it up. I'm going to read one verse that's not back there, so don't bother trying to get to it. It hit me during worship. In Revelation chapter 4, starting in verse 8, it says, And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And day and night they never cease to say, day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. You talk about 20 minutes, Kate? Guys, I know it's Valentine's Day tomorrow. We'll have to make that up. I get that. I get that. Repetitiveness. Why? 
Because sometimes we, we, we think that what we need is just more information. And we miss that in that experience, that encounter with God, we get things we don't get when we just learn something. Right. When we're with God, there's a transformation that happens. I think of the story in the New Testament that you can read throughout the gospel, so I'm not going to try to read a bunch of them, but you see over and over and over again these religious leaders, Pharisees, Sadducees, oftentimes it says in the New Testament, if you want to see the two specific groups, extremely well-versed in the Bible. They can quote it effortlessly. In fact, likely they have remembered the entire Old Testament word for word. You think memorizing as a kid, like John 3, 16 or something's challenging, they have to basically memorize the first five books just as part of their education system normally, just any kid. But these people had the Bible memorized. They could tell you what different scholars had said about that and what other scholars had commented on those scholars and what they said. They were very knowledgeable. And what's incredible is Jesus shows up on the scene and he's walking among them and all of a sudden, most of them, I don't know the exact percentage, but many of them we see completely miss Jesus. They had all the Bible knowledge, so to speak, and yet missed the experience that would have changed their life. There's a scripture in John 5, I think it's verse 39, it says, You search the scriptures, for in them you believe there's eternal life. But I tell you, these are the very scriptures that point to me. Why is he saying that? Because we search and search for knowledge. We search for doctrine. We search for understanding, which has its place and value. But if we don't encounter God and have an experience with God on a regular basis, we miss the transforming power of the Holy Spirit, which will do far more in a mere moment with him than any level of doctrinal study will do. It's amazing what God will do. And there's so many times you see this. Let me give you another example. Let me take it off of Bible for a moment and show you what I mean by knowledge not doing anything. If I were to ask you, how do you lose weight, we could have a huge list within minutes. We could talk about exercise. Maybe we'll argue on the fine details. Should you exercise five days a week? How much cardio? How much lifting? You know, should we use HIIT training and all that stuff? We could talk about diet. And you're like, well, there's keto and there's all these diets. But we would get the basic idea. Eat less and healthier. Move more. I mean, that really kind of gets down to it, right? And yet, for some reason, I mean, just mind-boggling, I could go to seminar upon seminar upon seminar and walk away, and I will not lose a single pound or get in a single ounce of better shape without doing anything with it. And what's amazing is I could go through all those and attempt to do something with it. I used to go to the gym and always hate January because all of a sudden the, the exercise equipment I wanted was taken up. Now I would just wait my three, four weeks, and most of the people would fade, and my gym equipment's available again. It was amazing. It was amazing. It's a phenomenon I experienced every year. And I say this because we know... The information. As students, if I say, how do you get good grades? We at least got a general idea. Sometimes it's misapplied. I get that. But some, we get the basic concept. If all I do is play video games and sports and never do my homework, it doesn't help your GPA at the end of the day. Now, some of you are probably the, the person that my, the teachers hate, that you just learn the material. And you, you, you just get, like, nothing on homework. And all of a sudden, your test is, like, perfect A's, and then, they like, nothing for homework. I get that. You, you understand the concept. But it doesn't help your GPA if you don't turn homework in. We understand for our job, like, if you don't show up and do your job and you, you're late all the time, we get the concepts. That doesn't help you. It, it, for some reason, employers don't like it if you don't show up and just no call, no show. I don't know why. I don't get the issue here. Teasing, right? We get this. It's knowledge. But that knowledge doesn't change anything. So here's the question. If we go to church over and over and over again, and we're learning this doctrine, and nothing changes, or very little changes, it leaves kind of two umbrellas of concepts that we have to ask. Really kind of three, which we'll get to the third. First is, God is unable or unwilling to change us. You go to church, and you learn God answers prayer. God heals God does miracles. 
God saves the sinner. God restores marriage. We, we talk about these things. We talk about you learn to forgive. But if we walk away, it's been a year, two years, three years, ten years. And the progression, the fruit of seeing salvation isn't happening. If the, the knowledge that we're learning isn't changing anything, first set of questions would be, is God able and is he willing? I think he is, but that's not what I'm arguing. I'm saying we have to look at that. Or is it we're unwilling? We're unable. And really that kind of the third part falls down to maybe actually what it is. It's not a lack of understanding. In some extent, maybe it's a lack of motivation. Because otherwise, what's the point of getting up here and preaching? I might as well just not even took a microphone. I might as well not even spoke. Because if all it becomes is information that does nothing more but add trivial knowledge to your bank of things you know, then we're wasting our time. If all you did was learn one more history nugget about a Pharisee, and you're like, oh, I know about Pharisees now. It does nothing. If all it does is the worship music was just another understanding that, oh, yeah, God's good. Okay, that's great. And it means nothing to us. We wasted our time. So that leaves a small little idea that maybe what we just need is more motivation. And if you've ever been to motivational conferences and stuff, that doesn't usually last. All of a sudden, you get pumped up. You're like, I remember being in Quick Start Amway when I was a like 20 year old. I was like, oh shoot, I heard millions of dollars. I saw bank accounts. I saw cars. I was like, oh, I am sold. I know that's greed. I get that. I understand, folks. I'm, I understand. I'm talking about. I had to grow, but I was sold on this. And you want to talk about motivating? You go in there, and it doesn't matter how bad you're like. Oh man, I've been told no a thousand times this week. All of a sudden, you listen. You're like, I can do this. Oh, yeah, all I got to do. And then you got the plan. Some of you have done this. You know what I'm talking about. On the back of a napkin, you're like writing the plan out, how you can make millions of dollars. And you're like, and then you hear, see, what really got me is, side note, when everybody had a story about a bird pooping on them. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way all of you have that story. There's no way all of you have the same story. So anyhow, it's, it's motivating. Two days later, five no's later, you're back to being like, I don't know. Same thing walking with Jesus. You come to church, worship music's great, bass is thumping. I like the bass part. Let's just be honest. Let's talk for a second here about honesty. When the bass is hitting, thank you, Sherry, Bob on the drums. That bass is going. Vocals are over it. It's just good. All of a sudden, Pastor Doug just ramps that song back up, and you're like, yeah, God is awesome. He's, he's still good. He's still on the throne. You're excited. And then next to you know, Monday morning, 9.02 or whatever time you start, but two minutes into it, for me, I start at like 5 a.m. starting buses, and you go out, you slip on a piece of ice, next you know, you're like, okay, this is stupid. Why does stuff always bad gotta happen? You're like, why is everybody a jerk? How come people can't just wake up in a good mood? All of a sudden, you get a bill you didn't expect, and you're like, why? Hey, why? I, I, what is Job happening to me? For those who don't know, Job had a lot of bad stuff happening to him. And we always feel like we must be Job. The first thing, a series of bad things happen. Normally, it's not that bad. But I'm just saying, we, we, that motivation wanes. Because here's what we need. We need to encounter the Holy Spirit. We need God to transform us. Because honestly, that is what he said. He said, I'm not going to just teach you the law. I'm going to write the law in your heart. But I'm going to give you a new heart. God didn't just say, I'm going to come and educate you. He said, I'm going to change you. They, if, for example, we see in 2 Corinthians 5 where God basically talks about how he who knew no sin, Jesus never sinned, he never knew what it was to sin, became sin so that we could become the righteousness of Christ, that we would become a new creation, no longer the old, but new, no longer earning it. We don't have to go and say, improve anything, but instead our life's start to come from a place that we live out of who we are, not trying to become something. We are something. We are saints. If you, For some people, there's this phrase, you know, a sinner saved by grace. That was true at one time, but if you've been walking with Jesus, you're not a sinner saved by grace. You're a saint saved by grace now. You've been transformed. You've been changed. All of a sudden, it's no longer about what you need to do. Yes, we need to learn. I'm about to get to that in just a minute. But the point is, we need to be continually encountering the Holy Spirit because that is where we walk away and all of a sudden people are like how come you're able to forgive and you can't give them the steps because you don't know you're like God did something in my life 
All of a sudden, when you're feeling like you had no hope, and then something all of a sudden, God just stirs in you, and you're like, people are like, how do you have hope? And you're like, I don't know. It's just what God's doing. I just know that whatever happens, God is going to come through. That this is temporary. There's an eternity, and I'm a part of that eternity. It's something bigger than the politics. It's bigger than COVID. It's bigger than the college education system. It's bigger than your career. There's something bigger and greater than all of that. And I know no matter what's happening here and now, that God has me in his kingdom, and that is what I'm a part of. All of a sudden, it raises hope, not found in what I know here, but what I know here, because he's changed me. And it's not just me. This isn't about Pastor Brian. I'm saying that is what we collectively, you listening online, we need that experience. It's when the gifts happen. I was asking, some of you might be watching like Hawks. I know I tend to. Like, I came over and asked Aaron over here. And I'm like, hey, do you got a word? He, maturity said, I have a word. And then he kind of shared what he thinks needs to happen with it. There's gifts moving. It doesn't always require getting on stage, grabbing a microphone. Sometimes it does. But the point is, all of a sudden, when those things are happening, what his word is for the person it's for, that might be more transformative than what I'm preaching. What Pastor Doug did, leading worship, what the, wor the worship team did, bringing us in the presence of God, might have been more of what you needed today than what I'm saying. All of a sudden, when you're up here getting prayer for by somebody on the prayer team or a pastor, and they start praying for you, maybe you had a breakthrough that you needed more than what I'm saying today. We come together, and the experience of being together as a church is what brings transformation. That, I said, I said, is the first stumbling spot. The second area is on the other side of this equation. And that's when people begin to stumble into going for experience, but no doctrine. It's really easy for that pendulum to swing from, oh, well, that's what we need. We need experience of God to just throw doctrine out the window. I'm just looking for God, and I just need more of God, and oh, God is so good. But you have no idea if that was God or not. You have no idea if that was God speaking to you, whether that's demonic, whether that's yourself. You, have, you see this over and over in scriptures. One of the scriptures that hit me that really, well, I actually got two. We're going to go to one of them in a second. But the first was, I'm thinking of the Israelites. They're at the mountain. God is right there. You can't miss him. Giant fireball on top of the mountain. Lightning on top of the mountain. Moses is talking to him. You were scared just a few minutes ago as an Israelite. He's right there. Then they're like, you know what? Let's just make something else. They had experience. They experienced God. They experienced God's deliverance. They experienced God's miracles. They watched the plagues when they were spared. They watched the Red Sea part and they passed through on dry ground. They had the experiences, but they had no knowledge of who God really was. I've seen it. I've watched videos where people do the weirdest things. And most of the time, if it's really weird, it's really not God. I don't, believe, I don't subscribe to this idea that God does the strangest things to prove he's God. I don't personally believe that. Can he sometimes? Sure. But when I read the Bible, I don't read about people doing stupid, crazy, weird stuff. And I see where people are like, have the Holy Spirit, and they throw it, and people are knocked over. I'm like, and then I watch a video of the martial art guy with the Tai Chi, like, and people are falling over, and it looks the exact same. I'm like, could it be God doing that? Sure, it could be. I'm not trying to say I know the answer. But what I do know is if we have no discernment, we can't recognize something, we chase experience, we get pulled away from the true God. We lose it. If you can pull up John chapter 4, verse 22, I think I put all three in there. If not, I'll just give you the paraphrase. But John chapter 4 has an incredible story. Jesus is at a well. And he's at this well, and he's talking to this woman, a Samaritan woman. And I'm not going to go through all the details. He's having this conversation with her. And eventually, they're going back and forth. And he gets to this point where he says this. You Samaritan, she's starting to recognize, this guy knows something. She was like, she doesn't really know who Jesus is, but she's like, okay, this guy comes from God. I can kind of figure that out. And she says this, you Samaritans worship what you do not know. 
We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews. The Samaritans had ex these experiences. They remember past encounters with God. And Jesus is right here saying, look, you're doing all this, but you really don't even know what you're worshiping. You've missed it. Next slide. Next verse. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in the truth. For they are the kind of worshiper the Father seeks. And he restates it basically verse 24. I won't read, but you can put it up there. Where do I want to go? I said, experience sometimes affect. I'll show you how I think it does affect us. The experience missing doctrine. I don't think we do wildfire. I don't think we try to do all that craziness. But this one area I think that we do fall into this danger is we allow life circumstances to begin to shape our doctrine. We start to say, I know this says this in the Bible, but I'm not seeing it. So therefore, that's not what it's meant. God does miracles. He did miracles. Not really today. God changes lives. I don't really see it today. Church is important. People need to gather, but we have the internet today. And the greatest one is, I think, that I've seen personally healing. Where people are like, I read about healing. And obviously we've seen people in this church who we've been praying for. Some get healed, some don't. Wish I had the answers. Wouldn't that be nice to be able to come up and like, this would be one of those questions. If Jesus could just stand here and physically speak to us and be like, hey, here's why. That would be so nice and helpful. I don't know the answer. But sometimes we've allowed those experiences to start to change what we believe. Instead of allowing the scriptures and God's spirit to tell us what is true, even when we don't understand why it doesn't always apply the way we think it should. Does God heal? 100%. Does God heal all the time when we ask? No. Our job's not to determine whether God will heal. Our job is to go to God and ask him to heal. He calls us to ask. He decides what he's going to do. If it's okay, can we pray for Michelle? We ask, come up, let's pray. For those who don't know, this is on prayer request, so I figured to be okay. Daughter's got bad news with cancer. And it's easy to to look at scriptures about healing and be like, oh, you just got to have more faith. But I don't think it's lack of faith. I don't know why. But we're going to ask God one more time not to allow experience to shape our beliefs, but just come together as a family and believe God will intervene in a miracle that's needed this morning. Just get away from doctrine and let's go into experience and find God's face on this. Lord, we ask that you, in this moment, would just intervene with a miracle in Michelle's life. Lord, that you would touch her and remove the cancer. It doesn't matter what the last report says. It doesn't matter if doctors said there's nothing else we can do. There's still something you can do. We ask, Lord, this morning, not by shouting and thinking it's the, the volume, it's the passion, but by believing it's your care and love they can bring about the divine miracle that Michelle needs. I ask, Lord, that what's going on doesn't change their confidence in you, Lord. Whether Michelle, whether the family, Bruce, Terry, Lord, their confidence stays anchored in your word, in your character. Lord, that you would not only do a miracle here, but Lord, I ask that you would speak prophetically into their lives. Lord, you would give them prophetic revelation into what's going on, that they could see from you and from your throne room what you're doing. And let them hold strong and firm to what you're doing. Confidence, Lord. We ask for confidence. Confidence.
continually was shot through this fire, this challenge. Lord, I ask that they would, she would feel the closer she's ever felt right now in this moment. So close to you. So the goal is, as they continue to soak with the Lord, the goal is to marry truth and experience. The truth and the spirit, the spirit of God together. That's the transformation. So let me end with one story. And if you want to stay and linger with the Lord for an altar time, please do. There's two disciples. They left Jerusalem watching just recently the death of Jesus who they thought was the Messiah, the hope of the future, the Savior, the King that was supposed to come and and set Israel free. They watched everything they thought they knew, everything they thought they understood, everything they had put their hope in and their belief in killed on a cross. And they're walking sad and heading back to Emmaus and and they're walking and all of a sudden this man joins them. And I'm paraphrasing, you find this in Luke 24. And they, this man joins them and is like, what's going on? They're like, where have you been? You don't know what just happened? Like, this prophet of Nazareth, Jesus, he was just 
killed. We thought he was the Messiah we were looking for, and he's dead. Like, what do you mean what's going on? Paraphrase. And they're walking along. And Jesus, it says, opens the scriptures and begins with Moses and the prophets explaining that everything that happened was foretold and supposed to happen. And they get to Emmaus where they're heading. And they, and Jesus acts like he's going to keep walking on because that's who the man actually was, was the resurrected Messiah that they thought was dead. And he acts like he's going to keep going. And they plead with the man, please stay, it's getting late. And as soon as they break bread, it says their eyes were open and Jesus disappeared. And they were like, did not our hearts burn inside of us as he opened the scriptures? All of a sudden, their eyes were open to the truth. Did they know the scriptures? Yes. Did they understand them? Limitedly. But then when encountered with the love and power of the one and only God, the Messiah, it changed and it changed their lives forever. That is what we're supposed to be doing as disciples. Following the truth, understanding, yes, but encountering and experiencing the love and presence of God with it. They go together. It's not one or the other. They go together. That is who God is looking for. That is what he wants from us. And that is what we're offering this morning. If you want to linger at the altars, maybe you're not saved. Maybe you've never asked Jesus. It just starts with that. Don't need to pray with you. You just need to say, God, I, I want you. I can talk to you afterwards and go and explain it, but it's asking Jesus into your life. But for the rest of you, like, I know Jesus. Can we just press in a little bit more today and say, God, help me to worship you in spirit and in truth. Don't let our experience shape our doctrine. Let our doctrine shape our experience, but not just intellectually. Let it actually transform our lives so it looks different. Yes. Lord, we ask this. Let that be our declaration and our surrender to you today. That we'd walk in both truth and in your spirit. Changed by your presence. Learning as you teach us. So that we can be faithful to go and be a light in this world. Changed and transformed. Reflecting your glory. Your light. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you want to stay at the altar, please do.